Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is GM Chapral Night. A sparse but absolutely huge desert map that's gone completely silent in the dead of night. Now, how huge are we talking? Well, according to the workshop page, it's actually max map size. So, if we're talking about area, well, think something along the lines of GM Fork. And from what I understand, this map is, despite its size, extremely detailed. And it's got a lot of secrets to hide, so we've got our work cut out for us, and we're going to have to strap in. Literally strap in, that is. This map is gigantic, and I don't feel like walking through these massive dark deserts, so we're going to need a ride once we're done with this town. I usually don't like to do this, but uh, we have rigged up a custom setup to give ourselves some headlights. And, well, I guess we'll just be able to enjoy the open road between spaces. Something I like to do is pick a random state and just zoom in and street view random towns. And I find desert towns are often so dreamlike in the way they appear, because they're just in the middle of nowhere. Normally you find settlements along rivers or coasts, but these, it's like miles and miles of nothing, and then this one little main street just in the middle of the desert. Usually it's because there used to be like a mining town or it's along some major roadway, but it's still really weird and it just seems so out of place. For ex Speaking of out of place, look at this little playground off on the side of the road, that facade making it seem like they're literally longing for greener pastures. Uh, this actually kind of reminds me of uh, of the playground setup we had indoors in my preschool. It had a similar backdrop. This bridge was, would move around when you jumped on it. Only this painting had a shark on it instead of a farm. Okay, we've got to see if that basketball is a physics prop. Uh, put the flashlight away so we don't get that bug. Come on. Uh, it is! Uh, and this hoop is short enough that I can just kind of cheat. Yep, take that, eight-year-olds. Well, we appear to be starting on the edge of town. At these distances, the splashlight isn't doing all that much for me. So I guess let's just pick a building on the edge and start, right? Uh, I I'm starting to really... I'm starting to really appreciate this genre of maps that I feel like is starting to get more popular. The idea of just capturing the mood of walking down the street at night in different American towns. I mean, maps like uh, Nightlight and Hood Corner. And now this. I, I wonder if these are meant to sort of capture a feeling that the creator is familiar with. Not quite ready to start going down alleyways yet, but uh, getting into the light is always nice. <laughs> First place we go into is a bail bonds joint. Awesome. And a pawn shop next door. Yep, this is uh, this is exactly what I would come to expect. Pawn. Wait. Okay, tattoo. Yeah, that makes more sense. Whoa. Wait. So does that mean that the pawn shop is actually handling bail bonds? I've never heard of that before. I do not like the way the deer just stares at you. Is mounted to be facing the door when you walk in. It's almost like it's meant to guilt you if you've got anything shady going on. Which, in this place, let's face it, you do. Oh, wow, the flicker of that sign. Like, I, I realize it's a texture glitch, but the way that sign flickers almost makes it seem like a faulty backlight. Actually kind of appropriate. Uh, what about this store across the street? Is it empty? No. Uh, these windows just have some really aggressive LOD installed. And over here we have Ye Olde Barbershop. Now, I'm probably going to try and, uh, oh wow, Ye Olde Barbershop minus the mirrors. They expect you to have a lot of faith, a lot of trust in these old towns. Uh, back in my day, oops. Now, maybe we can get a better idea for the lay of the land if we climb this water tower. I wonder if we can't maybe go in here, some kind of auto garage? 
Looks like there's nothing to see, though. A few things creep me out as much when I go for walks in the morning as just an open garage. Because it's just this dark cave in the middle of a suburban street, basically, that anything could be staring out of. It looks like we've got some houses and trailers over here. And we cannot climb the water tower. Something about that dull green lighting is just so appropriate for shambling in here at 3 o'clock in the morning. Huh, Bank of America! <laughs> well, I guess even out here there are some name brands that can appear. Then again, I suppose a local bank wouldn't really be worth all that much in a place like this. Uh... Oh, wow. This has actually got some neat RP features. Some of this stuff actually works. <laughs> we can even seal the doors with a button right here. I feel like a... No? Okay, so that handles that. And this handles that. Okay, well, that's pretty neat. Huh. Yeah, this flashlight is just not doing anything for me at these distances. Ah, uh, this must be... The police station, perhaps? Uh, maybe even county police. I mean, a, a place like this must have, like, what, three or four guys on duty? This looks like maybe either an armory or, like, evidence lockup. And you come out the back door and it's just nothing but darkness. This map is labeled as GM, but it's actually really well suited to RP. I mean, imagine you're here, you get a call of something crazy going on the next town over, you have to get, like, three or four cars and race over there down the highway. Eventually, you catch the criminal and bring them back here. You got Dirty Dan wasting away in his moldy little cell. Uh, it's just... Out here, it's like the... It's like the Old West never died. At least when you play it on a Gary's Mod map. Huh. Seems like the infirmary takes up like half the place, but... Uh, did they really have to go as far as having the one ominous wheelchair in the dark corner over there? And this leads right back around to the impound lot. I turned around and was just faced with a wall of darkness, and for a second I just couldn't process it. And it seems like the map can't process it either. God, why is that that way? That's one of the weirdest things I've seen. I've never had this happen before. Is it some kind of weird, like, LOD issue? Ah, oh, well... Should best be getting out of here. It seems like the med bay of this police station is haunted. Uh, let's see, is there actually a sign anywhere that says whether they're, like, town or county police? I mean, I imagine they probably cover the whole area, right? <laughs> you know, it, it really says something when the entire side of the police station is completely covered in graffiti. Patriotic graffiti, though, I guess. All right, uh, I think we go across the street, taking the scenic route, you know, down this dark alleyway, and start having a look at some of these trailers and houses. Now, this map, like I said, is gigantic. I might not go everywhere or see every interior, but I'm going to try my best to do all that I can. It doesn't look like we can actually enter this. Oh, we can! It's just, oddly enough, the door works, but the window doesn't. This is honestly my dream. Like, not even kidding around. I love this. 
Look, we've got the uh, we've got the bathroom right here. Presumably, this is a shower. Bed over here, just in this nice, comfy little corner, and the kitchen here. It's literally everything you need, and it can be had on the cheap. If I didn't have the YouTube needs, I, I literally wouldn't even buy a house. I would just buy something like this. I mean, honestly, what is a trailer except a safety bubble, right? Especially in a place like this, in the middle of the desert. Oh, <laughs> I guess I can hear the rats scurrying around. Well, that's fine. I can always clean up on my own. The thing is, uh, my point, I guess, is that stuff like this, these little trailers, to me, they don't feel like low-end housing. They feel like high-end bedding. And I'll stand by that. Feels real wrong just walking up to the porch of a darkened house and helping myself to the front door. Real nice place. Although... It seems to lack a bedroom, so... Hey, so far, trailer one, this place zero, right? I mean, I guess it's built for entertaining guests and nothing else. This would make a nice Airbnb, uh, provided it's only serving a couple of people and they don't mind sleeping on a couch. Of course, you'd have to bring your own couch. Oh, I get it. The purpose of this Airbnb is that it's haunted, and so you get an experience out of it, and thus they're able to charge more. And they have no time for such creature comforts as a bed. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Like, look, I played on maps before that had the occasional cough or footstep as ambiance, but that was very, very frequent. Oh, and I guess also screw you if you want to access the upstairs. They never built a staircase. And this place at least has a light on the front porch. And a really weird texture thing going on. Yeah, it seems like the houses are mostly empty. So I'm probably going to skip them for the most part unless they have some interesting features. Oh, look, oh, look! Uh, the haunted house has a dilapidated swing set in the back perfect for your ghostly photo ops. If you angle it the right way, you can see a face in the window. You... Oh, now there's a sight. Silhouetted house up on the hill in the middle of the desert, all alone. One light on in the window that casts all the way through into the next room, and a dark, giant moon hanging in the sky above it. We're heading over there next, but uh, first we've got to finish what's down here in town. And I believe last time we got as far as this garage. Uh, here's the gas station. Sorry we're closed. What do you do when the gas station is closed? I mean, in the middle of this, it's not like you have options. Motel... See, the presence of things like this suggests that maybe there was some reason to be here at some point in the past. But I feel like that's how it is with a lot of western towns. Uh, must have ID, 18, only two people per room, no visiting, no coming and going, must remain on premises until time is up. <laughs> yep, I feel like a place like this would have to enforce such rules. Place has even got a dining area. But we can't... Oh, we can open here. Oh, wait. Does it have a pool? Uh, it does! Okay, so... Honestly, if I were living in this town, I'd check into this place just for pool access. Not responsible for accidents. It's a little broad, don't you think? Okay, so what do accommodations in a place like this actually look like? What is that? You know, something real tall standing behind the building, and... <laughs> I get that it's probably some kind of, like, silo or tower or something, but... You know, to me, it just looks like a broad-shouldered man in a tiny hat. 
All these spray bottles and beer cans just littering the ground. Eh, it's more or less what you'd expect. Actually a bit of a bigger bathroom than you'd expect from a place like this. All in all, not bad, and if it's under a hundred bucks a night, again, in a place like this, it's worth it for the pool, I feel like. Uh, anything else on this street? No. Just a couple of lone trailers out in the middle of the desert. Some of them like to be by themselves. Uh, well, at least we have some choice when it comes to mechanics, it seems. Can we open this? No. Hmm. There's something in my New York brain that is just deeply unnerved by the sight of a building that's completely dark at night. Like around here, there's not really any such thing as a truly abandoned building. Usually, even if a place is vacant, the owner will at least keep some kind of lights on. I guess there's that, but that's about it. It's just, it's really weird to see a building as a shadow against the night sky. But in a place like this, it's like, that's not for anyone. There's no reason to do so, so why should they? It's just a much more who cares style of attitude. And I suppose that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. And I'm not sure, this just seems to be some kind of like power infrastructure. Uh, but, or something? I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure if this is power infrastructure, because I'm not seeing any transformers or anything. These all look like tanks of something. Although what? I'm not sure. Actually, hmm, I, I mean, maybe it's something to do with uh, the fact that it's along the railroad. I mean, yeah, look, these tracks pass literal feet in front of the fence. Uh, but once we head up that hill and see what we're dealing with, I think we'll be... Oh, well, there we go. There's the power infrastructure right there. You know, I'm real curious about what's going on up that hill, and if I'm not going to be able to rely on my flashlight at these distances, well, we might as well go for atmospheric, right? And we've got a we've got a radio tower up here. I wonder if this isn't maybe part of the operation of that tower, or. If this isn't just some kind of, like, ham radio enthusiast or something. No trespassing. Well, that could mean anything. Yeah, no, this definitely looks more like uh, something official. Note, I didn't say well-maintained, just, you know, official. That's really unnerving, you know that? You know, back when I did my Why Are Source Games Creepy videos, I cited things like city ambiance. Well, there's something different altogether about having actual human ambiance in a place devoid of life. What is this going to be? Is this going to be the same thing? Yeah, but no bed, so it sucks. I love this, like, really slapdash, like, porch that's been built just off of the door. Oh no, anything out in the shed? Kind of looks like there's more stuff off in the distance, but... I don't think we're going to be heading over there without a ride. In the meantime, we should actually be ascending these, uh, these stairs and see if we can't get a better view. Now, I'm pretty sure that's just like a pole or something, but it, it really, really looks like there's somebody standing up there, doesn't it? And even these stairs seem to be clipped. Actually, I sort of seem to be clipping through them, or at least I did at that earlier part. This is a really nice detail. I don't know if I've ever seen simulated on a map before. The way these things are just built into these sandy hills and the sand over time just kind of washes over them like a wave. But do we have a ladder? That would be an absolute godsend at this point. In fact, I'm seeing lights down below. These lights are going to be what guides us in the darkness of the desert. Oh, we can climb it! Let's go! 
Oh man, I I hate heights so much. I can't even get up on a step ladder without getting nervous. So uh, something like this would be an absolute no for me. Come on. Oh my god. Okay, well, I suppose this works. Not too far from as high as it'll let us go, which does not lead to a platform. Oh. It looks like those are just what passes for streetlights. Alright, um... Well, as soon as I figure out how to get down from here, let's go on a little road trip, shall we? Now, if we're gonna make this a road trip along the lines of GM Fork, I figure we might as well take the scenic route whenever we can, right? So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll wrap around this way, and then probably take it down Main Street. Oh wow, this is so cool. I mean, it's a real simple thing, slapping a couple of lamps to the front of this, but... I don't know, it's stuff like this that just reminds me of what Gary's Mod can do, you know? Uh, it looks like to get around the hotel, uh, we might have to take a little detour and just drive on the tracks a little bit. I mean, I don't see no trains coming, do you? Nor do I see any cops. There we go. And let's just bring it around. Maybe we could even see how far this road goes. Hello, there's a trailer park here that I may have missed. And it looks real ominous. Oh, wow. You know, because these headlights stay on, it's actually extremely useful to have this thing. I can illuminate any area that I want. And actually quite brightly. Still quite a creepy image, isn't it? <laughs> this what appears to be an abandoned trailer park just illuminated on the edge of these headlights. Totally unknown to us until our car caught it. Imagine we're walking up and we just see a shadow pass over this whole thing. Alright, well, let's uh, get our flashlight out and look around. Actually, what am I doing? No, 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 the lantern. Walking through a place like this, you almost, uh, you almost feel the eyes on you. Like you're unwelcome. Are we gonna be able to get in here? No, you know what? That's fine by me. That one looks like it has a 3D interior, though. The upper layer of this has been stripped away, it seems. As well as the door to the fridge. This place has been thoroughly looted. Okay. You know, it's only now that I'm realizing the downside to trailer living. Coming home after a long day and finding it dark and empty. I mean, <laughs> how could you walk past the shower not thinking that somebody might be behind it? I would dread the days when I forget to close or open the curtain. Alright, well, this wandering around, you know, city boy investigating the abandoned trailer park... This is how one gets Texas Chainsaw Massacred, so I'm going to bounce. Uh, the sooner we see the lights of that small town, the better. Might as well be Times Square at this rate. Alright, let's go, go, go! <laughs> uh, I had forgotten, I had forgotten that this vehicle has that acceleration that's really difficult to control in VR. barbed wire fence along the side of the road. This whole thing just has a very unfriendly vibe to it, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a little off. And again, maybe that's just me, because I'm not used to this kind of thing.
You know, much like how I felt walking down the street on GM Hood Corner. It's actually a little bit bizarre how real this feels just driving down this road in VR. And you know, it's not even... I'm starting to have more of an appreciation for the idea of a city that's gone to sleep rather than dead. But it's not post-apocalyptic, it's just the eerie night. Now, the sodium vapor lights definitely help, but... There's not going to be anything to guide us but the road and the power lines now, unless we come upon a tunnel. This feels like the kind of thing that has a man with a hook for a hand waiting at the end. I mean, really, why a tunnel in the middle of the desert like this? We are just going to floor it straight out the end. We're not going to wait for somebody to ambush us. <laughs> it's almost like these guardrails are anti-ambush devices, but... It seems like we have come upon another option for gas. And the size of this thing, it almost feels like it might as well be some kind of rural buckies. Doesn't seem to be much inside, but uh, maybe we can get something to eat? Uh, I do love these roadside diners with the convenience store attached. Uh, how do we get in there? Do we have to go through the front doors? This is real creepy. Just something about the haphazard way the carts are strewn about in these... This really weird, like, L-shaped architecture in here. I don't know, it just feels like it's meant for hiding. A lot of corners for a convenience store. Come on. Well, I guess you could enter from either side. But still, I'm so used to these spaces being so open. And not being able to see over these tall, uh, tall shelves. It is somewhat reassuring looking out the window and being able to see my headlights, though. But seriously, how do we get to that diner? I mean, I'm starved. There's just something about being on the road that makes me hungry, even though it's literally less work than walking. But when you've been on the road for a long time, there's just nothing like, finally... You, you can already feel your legs start to relax the second you pull into the parking lot. And then you get out and shamble over, and they seat you in a booth, and it's just the most comfortable thing in the world. Someone here? <laughs> Somehow, the sounds of the plates being rustled is even worse than the coughing, because it's so specific to the location. Alright, well... Uh, just imagine I got myself a plate of fries to munch on, and now I'm ready to hit the road again. Even after all this, I still tend to just nibble. Uh, what's that across the street? Not just a trailer park, but a whole rundown town. Wow. Rusty mailbox sitting at an angle. The paint stripped bare off the place, if it ever had paint to begin with. You hear that ding? It sounded like a little bell ringing somewhere off in this. <laughs> Look, there's even like boards missing from the from the deck. Uh, it's like I can smell the wood rot. Yeah, no, definitely sounds like maybe wind chimes. <laughs> I, I saw the pole in my peripheral vision and I got completely startled by it. Uh, what is that over there? Something looks like it's like glowing blue. I don't know, just a paint can behaving weirdly. I know I'm trying, it seems like, to be Texas Chainsaw Massacred, but look, uh, the whole idea, look at this. 
so much stuff left behind. And in a case like this, it's like no one's even, oh no, well, I was going to say it's like no one's bothered to loot it, but really, it seems like somebody was using this as unofficial storage. Look, we've even got stuff like hanging down from the ceiling. A lantern that someone not unlike myself must have used to work in here in the dark. Or maybe somebody was actually staying here. Look, laundry up on the clotheslines, long abandoned. There's a weird thought. The idea of this place that was abandoned when someone arrived here being once again abandoned by that person and bearing signs of that fact. I don't know. There's just something about an abandoned rural, like, entire town that hits a bit creepier than just an abandoned building in the midst of other things. Because you really think about things like this, how... <laughs> How, at night, it just sits here totally silent except for the wind whistling through the holes in the doors and the ceiling. Oh, this is so unbelievably detailed. I, I didn't expect this to have such an urbex slant to it, but it really, really does. It's got the ambiance of the mice shittering away. Oh, this is an unbelievable attention to detail, and once again makes me wonder if it wasn't uh, created based on experience. Like they weren't trying to achieve a certain vibe. You know, because I'm looking at this having made a map, and I'm just thinking that there is a certain catharsis in creating an environment. In creating a space that you find comfortable in a digital medium. There's even a car left behind. Okay, are there any other... Are there any other houses around here? There's a shed back here. There's hardly anything left. Is that what I think it is? Is that... Oh my god! Is this an honest-to-business aircraft graveyard? Look at that. Uh, aircraft graveyards are so cool. When people manage to urbex these things, it's like the holy grail. I mean, you're looking at these, like, what do these things go for? Like hundreds of millions, even a billion dollars? And now they're just sitting here in the middle of the desert, all lined up wing to wing, totally broken apart for anything valuable. Oh, look, there's a whole bunch of them. Here's, what is this, a helicopter? Its walls completely stripped away. It's like... These things have always reminded me of, uh, like, those whale graveyards that are on the bottom of the ocean. Where there's just skeletons, like, end over end. Or am I thinking of elephants? I mean, whales are basically sea elephants, right? Or are elephants land whales? Hmm. Things to think about. Or are whales sea planes? I guess... Mm. All right, we're not going to pursue this line of thought too much. I am way, way too tired for this. And I'll probably end up discovering something about the intrinsic reality of the universe that I don't want to know. That man wasn't meant to know. It's just weird to look at something like this and think, like, at some point, probably for a period of years, each of these things was serving some function, was an incredibly valuable investment... Flying people, who knows who, through the air? Who knows where these things have been? Actually, I think this is one case where a flashlight would probably be a bit more easy. Ooh, ooh, the ramp is open. We can climb on board, or we can just phase through the ramp. Hang on. Uh, but the rest of the plane itself is solid. Oh, look at this. We can even see through the, through the windows. Look at that, peering out at the propellers on the sides. I, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy to think that all of these aircraft serve such different functions to so many different people over a period of however many years, and yet all these stories end in the same place. 
All right, well, if there's nothing else to see here, uh, actually, can we climb board this one? Oh, we can. That makes you wonder what happened to this one for the rest to be left intact, but that almost looks like, that almost looks like decompression, like the metal was pulled outward, damaging the wing in the process. Uh, but I guess managing to land after that is an accomplishment, although you know, the missing seats here are quite conspicuous. All right, but what is that over there? Is that maybe, is that maybe a hangar? It seems so, but nobody home at the moment. I do wonder if maybe even the hangar itself isn't abandoned. An abandoned graveyard, now that's a thing to think about, isn't it? Whether, whether it be for people or machines. Well, it's got the echoing ambiance of some place that's still working, and the cold drink machine of a place that's still working. I will have that, thank you. Uh, then again, from what I understand, the desert does get quite cold at night, doesn't it? Uh, where are we, actually? I've done so much walking, I've completely lost track of my location. There's another radio tower. But there's something up here. Oh, wow. Oh, no, this is the same place. I thought we had driven much farther than this, but it must, like, sort of loop around. This is the same radio tower. Actually, I suppose while we're here, we might as well try and see if we can get gas, right? I mean, we already gassed ourselves up on food. Yep. Yeah. yeah, just slide into the pump. Like a glove. Yeah, but it seems this place is quite deserted as well. No? You're not going to let me open up? I mean, I can clearly see that there's space in there. Oh, I don't like this. Uh, reaching my lantern through, peering through the dilapidated boards. I'm barely able to see the back wall. It's enough to make a piece of plywood moving under my feet jump scare me. But it doesn't seem like there's really anything to see. Oh, we can get in. But so far, we're two for two on gas stations being quite abandoned. Alright, uh, I think we've seen about all there is to see in this town. Imagine we just see the headlights and hear the rev of the engine as this thing drives away. Apparently taken by the only soul we've yet encountered. Alright, let's, uh, let's get moving. This place is freaking me out. See, I feel like the desert, as a setting for horror, actually works as, like, a distilled form of the same reason that a forest is scary. Where, yes, it's the vastness and the isolation but in a forest, there's also the element of the unknown and the incompleteness of information, of not knowing what's going to be in that cave or behind that next tree. I think this is the edge of the map, so we're going to turn back and take a, take a different route off of here, not going back through the tunnel. In the desert, you can see everything for miles around. There's nowhere where anything can possibly hide, and, well, by extension, there's nowhere you can hide. But that's not even the worst of it, because in the forest, I feel like it's about what's gone unnoticed, what's not been discovered within that incompleteness of information. Where in the desert, it's more about what's been overlooked. What is out here that anyone could find, it's just that no one comes out here. And so when you walk through that small town, you just feel like, well, almost like you're on an alien planet. When you go off the highway and onto the dirt road, and you're just seeing an unfamiliar way of life. You get the vague feeling that you're just not welcome here. And you don't relate to the people. 
Even if there's nothing really wrong with them, it, there probably isn't anything wrong with them. It's just so uncomfortable, and you realize that if they wanted to do something to you, well, there's nobody really coming to help. Huh. Have I come upon, like, uh, some kind of military base or something? Use of deadly force authorized. God, yeah, you are now entering a U.S. military installation. Oh, uh, well. How do we open the gate? Is there, is there perhaps a control in here? Come on. I don't see anything. It doesn't look like we can actually enter. What happens if we have a look over here? Ooh. It's looking like this whole thing is actually underground. Uh, if we if we go back along this wall, I'm guessing that it probably... Yeah, it slopes up. It's all beneath this hill. Alright, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a complete loop around the map, and then we'll come back here and see what's within. I know I talk about headlights a lot, but there was just something really creepy of all these dire red signs in this gate appearing as I came down this dirt road. The vacation is officially over. Now, there is something over here. And let's... Uh, ooh, wait. Uh, well, wait. It looks like there's actually a bunker right there. So we'll turn around and check that out as well. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Hmm. I wonder if this wasn't like some paranoid person camped out and trying to spy on vehicles coming in and out of the base. If they were here, I wonder if they didn't eventually take notice and what happened to the person. Alright, let's uh, turn these around so we can get some light on that bunker. Oh, come on. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. In VR, it is so hard to avoid just hitting that. Okay, uh... There we are. Definitely part of the installation. But seemingly much less secure and all tagged up. Use of deadly force has been authorized. Oh, thank you. I thought I'd never get permission. we found our entrance. Well, it just wouldn't be one of my explorers unless there were some unexpectedly massive underground, would it be? Let's go. Not even the courtesy of an elevator. <laughs> well, the lights are on. But the walls are all rusted out. The place is probably still in use, but maybe this particular entrance isn't surface access. Well, you know, when you enter an abandoned military installation, that's kind of the first thing you want to see, so it's really good that we got that out of the way early. Uh, question is, will you actually open? No, no yeah, of course not. Of course not. You're just there to taunt me. Now, don't think I don't notice those crawlable vents. Okay, we don't need this for the time being. And we may have to defend ourselves from the government, which is very much in the spirit of this map, I feel like. Huh. Well, it doesn't look like vehicles could actually get through here. I wonder what the... Oh, wow, look at all these winding concrete corridors. Very wide, but, like I said, not vehicle access. 
I wonder what the purpose of such an installation would be. These look like barracks. And actually a pretty cozy area for hanging out, like a common room. Huh. Well, the place is definitely not well maintained. It looks like this area is flooded. Anything behind these crates? No. I'm just on the lookout for potential entrances to those vents. And not everything is as well lit as that main hallway. What is all this? It's a whole underground rail system! I, I, I guess used to transport materials across the desert in secret. That is nuts! I, this is basically as big as that whole town. And it's just one room of this abandoned military base just on the outskirts? I, I think that's the appeal of like secret government locations like Area 51. The idea that something so unassuming in the middle of nowhere, and not unlike the town itself, could be concealing a secret like this. And knowing that stuff like this presumably actually exists. Uh, doesn't seem to be much over here. Okay, we'll, we'll get to exploring that uh, as soon as we finished with this level. Bathroom. And presumably some kind of security room. Well, lucky for me, somebody's sleeping on the job. This doesn't appear to do anything. <laughs> yeah, just sneak into this military base and start pushing buttons. Real great thing to do with the signs we've seen. I, I wonder what they would do in that scenario. I mean, uh, presumably you'd get interrogated for like days. But if you really are a tourist who just kind of blundered in here, well, what could they do? I mean, actually with the signs, they probably could prosecute, right? Maybe even catch an espionage charge if they really feel like screwing with you. Then again, I just can't stop thinking about that one lone sleeping bag in that shack just outside. And what became of that person? The thing is, there's only two scenarios that come to mind. Either their bones are being picked by buzzards out in the desert somewhere, or they're being picked by rats down here. What could this be? Dynamic environment interaction. These blast doors don't inspire confidence. This is starting to feel more like SCP or something. Like, have I just blundered into some kind of site? No freaking way. No freaking way! Conspiracy guy living in the shack was absolutely right! Uh, if this is indeed what he was suspecting them of, but it seems like whatever he was suspecting them of, they've done it. Like, literally any accusation. Look at these. Well, uh, I guess we might as well play the part, right? Can we, uh... Yeah, boom, there. <laughs> Driving around in the lunar rover? Ah, oh, this is like my childhood dream come true. Well, actually, it's kind of dashing them at the same time, which is a really weird uh, clash of feelings. You know, I have to say, I, I always come into these maps not knowing what to expect. This, in particular, was certainly not on my bingo card. Could not have anticipated that if I tried. So, bravo, creator. Surface access. Well, I've heard that before. Uh, here's the warehouse where they're keeping the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, look, you can't accuse me of coming up with anything that's far-fetched at this point, right? I mean, really, at this stage, I wouldn't be surprised by anything. Well, 
I guess we found one thing that's sort of surprising, and that's that this base is using the same plywood technology these people are using to build their decks. Oops. Let me off. Huh. A little bit disconcerting, knowing what this place is. Or, it seems actually like this place is a lot of things. Wow. It gets even bigger the further down we go. But it seems like we've successfully looped back around over to here. It probably just goes upstairs. Yeah, that's what this is. A train transporting military equipment. Moving probably over hundreds if not thousands of miles of desert. All completely unnoticed from things like aircraft and satellite surveillance. Quite a valuable asset to have, honestly. Uh, Alright, well, let's see what happens if we go a little deeper into the facility then. Although I'll be very surprised if it's able to top what we've seen already. Oh, what is this over here? Oh, it's one of these type of lifts. That is crazy. <laughs> you know, I know these things probably exist in real life, but when I see them, all I can think of is Half-Life 1 and just swatting head crabs as they slide down it like a slip and slide. Now, yeah, what have we got around these corners? We're never gonna know. This place is absolutely nuts. I mean, what we're seeing, it seems like, is only the tip of the iceberg. I don't suppose we can fiddle with these controls. Oh, we can! There's a lift here. Right, that's kind of neat, and also not particularly useful. Is it because I hit it twice by accident? All right, well, it's a good thing I have tools at my disposal. Now the question is, is there anything that I might have missed? I'm gonna have a look around here, and then if I don't find anything, I'll take the lift up to the surface, I guess. Actually, I, I suppose there kind of has to be something else, right? Because, you know, remote door control, there has to be something else, because we haven't located the entrance to those vents yet. But this one doesn't want to open. Uh, there is another door over there, though. I can hear the sounds of distant trains. Somehow, I get the feeling that this rail line might get even more traffic than the one up by the, uh, up by the town. Ah, uh, the generator room. It's- I'm still in shock from the conspiracy we discovered and confirmed. Uh, do you think if we look through any of the notebooks here, we can find, like, Stanley Kubrick's autograph? Oh, by the way, if you're... Uh, this is a totally random note, but uh, if you're interested in, like, moon landing conspiracies, a movie I really recommend is Operation Avalanche. It is so cool and fun. Uh, huh. This room wouldn't be much without the ominous floodlights, but uh, it seems that they don't really care much for safety here. Can we get through this? Nope, that's more or less the end of the road. Okay, so how do we access that vent then? I'm sort of wondering if it's not maybe some kind of alternate surface access? We could take the ladders, but honestly, who has the time for that? Some place like this cannot be fire safe. I mean, imagine like a hundred people trying to clamor on out of here. No protective harnesses or anything. Uh, am I going to need help to actually get this thing going again? Okay, well, ladder it is, I guess. Unless, wait, can I, can I do the sickest thing? Come on. Yep. Oh, it is on a timer. I thought I was going to have to run and jump. Oh, no. We just can't launch it from here. It has to be activated from the other side. Oh, that's lame. 
stupid U.S. government can fake a moon landing but can't even build a proper elevator or a proper ladder that I can get onto, apparently. Now, luckily, it's not all that far to the surface. Now, being in that cramped ladder going down certainly made it feel much deeper than it was, but, uh... Well, it's certainly deeper than your average facility, for whatever that's worth. Now, uh, is there a place where we can bring this up? Maybe, yeah, right here? I have a dream for this map right now. And that's gonna be to drive my personal vehicle in a place where the government would likely have me killed for bringing it. Uh, that's always been kind of a, that's always been kind of a fantasy of mine. Uh, danger high voltage. And there she is. Now, there's got to be some kind of gate control somewhere, right? There's just got to be. It just... Ah, oh, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Open up! I mean, hey, if nobody's going to be here, I'm totally fine with having the gates wide open and just telling all the conspiracy nuts in town, and you know it's all of them, to just rush on in here and see for themselves. Bring your camera. Bring your phone. I encourage you to document everything you see, because if they're going to leave it this unprotected, they honestly deserve it. And, you know, sometimes when people expose government vulnerabilities, they get hired as consultants. I figure there's about a 50-50 chance of me becoming very wealthy and with a storied career, or getting tortured to death on a black site. But sometimes you got to roll those dice. Anyway, let's uh, get down there. Just go up and over the speed bump. Ba dump, ba dump. This is so funny. I love this map so much. I mean, it, it is so dark and atmospheric, and it really. On certain maps, you kind of expect there to be a dark secret, but I, I really appreciate how this is something that there's just like no way anyone could have predicted. Uh, this elevator is conspicuously not here. Did I? Oh, it is. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess we're meant to just, like, sit down and slide onto the thing. Uh, which is fine by me, to be totally honest. Woohoo! Oh, God! This was not the time for that to happen! Oh, God! Uh. Uh. Well... It's a good thing I have the same car retrieval device used in GM Fork. This has always got to happen at least once in every uh, in every road trip episode. There we go. I've really got to play the long drive on this channel. I can't remember if I own it or not. Well, let's get in. And here we are. <laughs> There's just something so funny about not only sneaking myself into a secure location, but also my whole stinking car. There we go. Face to face. Or really, I, I think there's just something about, and this is true in Urbex as well, being in a location that at one time would have been so secure and so top secret and with so many resources thrown at it, at it uh, but that now I can just walk around in totally unopposed. Nobody's going to do anything. It's just walking around knowing where it is you are. Yeah. But I think I've had my fun and it's time to retire for the night. I'm certainly going to be making a lot of rounds on the talk show circuit, I'll tell you that much. So that was GM Chapral. And I feel like it basically does two things really well. And it's the two things that I've come to find Gary's Mod and mapping in general are best at. First off, it seeks to create a setting that is just an encapsulation of a feeling. Something that maybe the creator only sort of recognizes or something that maybe even be part of their own lives. And then, once they've done that and explored it in all its potential variety and to its fullest extent... I mean, we've got this quiet little main street, we've got the roadside diner, the random tunnel, the abandoned village just across the street from said diner, the airplane graveyard, and... 
Well, finally, that brings us to the other thing that these things are good at. And that's, once you've created this space, you realize you can do anything you want with it. And anything in this case really does mean anything. Part of what I'm coming to realize is so cool about source modding is how we've been given the tools and the assets to really allow anyone to convey these really specific settings and ideas. I mean, just look at any, you know, game suggestion forum. People have all these ideas of these really, like, niche premise games. But you never see them in a commercial product. I feel like Gary's Mod and the Source Engine in general really allow people to explore that creativity and say, hey, as long as one person is willing to put in the effort, we can have things like this. Although, I suppose this setting isn't entirely unexplored. I mean, you know, this whole time I've been avoiding directly comparing it to Sandy Shores. Uh, hello, is that bar actually open? I didn't even notice that before. <laughs> it's a bar, but if anything, it just feels like somebody's living room. Which I suppose in a place like this is, well... Actually, the kind of cozy vibe you want, isn't it? You know, in, in this map's case in particular, I will close with the comment of... I really appreciate maps that utilize the area with the open space in between them. And it's not wasted space, it's space that allows the isolation of the individual areas within it to stand out. I mean, there's just something so cool about driving down the road at night, seeing a diner, and only when you're exiting do you see that abandoned town just in the darkness beyond it. Huh, hey. Uh, got, finally got off work from the pawn shop slash bail bonds place, huh? Yeah, I feel like this is going to become a favorite spot of mine as well. But if you like this video... Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.